for in him. Now, who is him right here? Jesus Christ. Okay, I'm going to ask it one more time. It's the Word. Okay? Uh, we're told in verse 14, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. All right? So, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, I do thank thee for today and for all the blessings that uh, we have in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Father, that he is indeed our head, the head of the body of Christ. And I pray as we uh, examine this morning here uh, what life is, that you'll bless our hearts with it. Uh, might you give us a greater understanding of the work that you did through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Might we appreciate it more in order to carry it out to folks that need to hear it. Well, thank you for that in Christ's name. Amen. And amen. amen. Now, a great piece of work, or piece of music, I should say, the composers often begin by stating the themes almost immediately, which are to be elaborated during the course of the music concert, or whatever you want to call that. Now, John does the same thing. And right here in verse number 4, he says, In him was life, and the life was the what of men? Life was the light of men. And so what we find is that John, throughout his gospel, is going to build the gospel around life and light. Uh, this is the first mention here that we see of life. What is the last mention of it? Does anybody know? Of light. Of light. Come on back with me to John chapter number 20 and verse number 31. Come on back here, then I'll flip back, all right? 20, 31 says, yet these are recorded. I should read verse 30. Now Jesus performed many other miracles and miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this small scroll. Yet these are recorded that you should believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of Hail, and believing you may have the only in life through his name. So the gospel begins with life and the gospel ends with life. All right? Begins and ends with life. Also, we need to note here this morning is that the word life is continually on the lips of our Lord Jesus Christ. Just a few verses. Uh, chapter number five. We're going to stay right in John here this morning. Come over to chapter number five with me, please. And let's notice, first of all, verse number 40. Now watch what the Lord says here. And yet you are unwilling to come to me that you may have what? I mean, he came to give life. But yet, people are unwilling to come to him in order that they may have what? They may have life. I come back, uh, back to chapter number 10, please. Chapter number 10. Alright. Chapter number 10. Be right with you. Chapter number 10, and we want verse number 10. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Now watch what he says. I have come that they may have what? Life. Life. And may have it in abundance. See, the whole gospel is built around this. Life and light. Uh, same chapter, verse number 28, please. And I give them life the omen that they should by no means be perishing, and no one shall be snatching them out of my hand. Now, when we say a eonian, what are we saying? Age abiding. Okay, age abiding life. Now, I'll explain that before we're finished here this morning. Then finally, if you come over to chapter 14, a verse you all know, and most of you have probably have it by uh, memory, uh, verse number 6, where he says, I am the way, replied Jesus, and the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through who? <laughs> except through me. So, the word life appears 35 plus times in the Gospel of John. And the word is actually zoe. It's Z-O-E, long O, long E. Okay? And that's the meaning of water. That's the word for life in the Greek. To live, the verb appears 15 plus times, and that's zen. So you see, uh, what that's 50, over 50 times, this subject of life is going to appear in the Gospel of John. It begins with life. And it ends with life, pretty simple. But what does our Lord Jesus mean when he says life? That's what we want to look at here this morning. Maybe. Here it is. What is life? Uh oh. Well, you jumped ahead of me. But life is the opposite of destruction, condemnation, and death. Have you ever thought about 
life is? I mean, it's very simple. Right? Really? You're alive or you're not. Alright? It's the opposite of destruction, condemnation, and death. Now, what we find is this. We find some verses that are going to show us this. Okay? Life, right here in the bottom. Everybody knows John 3.16. Yep. Whoever believes won't perish. What's it mean to perish? Yeah. <laughs> to die, alright? Uh, but we'll have eonia life. Let's come back to chapter 5 again. Verse 24. This verse is going to appear in number 9 in our study. Okay, 524. And what do we have here? 524. Where it says, Amen, Amen. I am saying to you that he who is hearing me, the Logos, and believing him who sends me, has what? Life the Odeon. And is not coming into judging, but has proceeded out of life, or out of death, and into life. Now this is, this is very important, because it says, he who is hearing me. Uh, Wednesday night we had a little discussion. Uh, I heard, a, I heard a, a radio show, and someone called in to the, uh, to the host and said, listen, I started listening to you back in the spring sometime of this year, and I was challenged to do that by one of my workmates. And so I started to do that. He said, you know, at first I was listening. But I wasn't hearing. Mm -hmm. And something caught my ear and I started to hear. Mm -hmm. What was the problem with the Jews in relationship to Jesus Christ? Yeah. They, didn't hear. they were listening but not hearing. They had no idea what he was saying. Say, their hearts and minds weren't in it, in other words. Okay? So he that is hearing me, alright, has life eonian. Okay, life eonian. Then now to verse 29. Uh, let's start at 28. Wonder not this, for a time is coming when all who are in the graves will hear his voice and will come out. They that have done good to the resurrection of life, and they that have done wicked to the resurrection of what? Judgment. Judgment. Does that mean there's only two resurrections? No, no, no there's many resurrections. Mm -hmm. We need to understand that. It all depends on what your inheritance is, what your calling is, that sort of thing. But here's the point is this the resurrection of life. Okay? Resurrection of life is what we're looking at in uh, contrast to the resurrection of judgment. Alright? Then finally, come over to chapter 10. Chapter number 10, one more time. And verse number 28. Yes, dear? Would you like to define damnation? What is damnation? Okay, let's do it. <coughs> we have death, condemnation, damnation. What is condemnation? <laughs> when you're condemned, right? Like <laughs> yeah, condemnation is judging. That's when you're judged. Okay. Okay, you're judged. Now, what is damage? It's what? It's a punishment. A damnation is a punishment. Yes. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah. That's what I said. Yes, dear. Well, why do you have to say Ionian when it says everlasting? <laughs> I mean, Ionian you know, is for a dear sweet little lady, you sure are troubling. <laughs> <laughs> trouble here. I'm teasing you. I'm just teasing you. Yeah. Well, everlasting, forever, those words have a, a, a connotation of what? Time. Of time. Never read it. Never read it. Yeah. The context there is Yeah. Matthew 25, 46. And these will go away and go to your only punishment. Yes. But the righteous is the life eternal. Okay. But the thing about me. Kingdom. Kingdom, yeah. Now we understand. Yeah. King, kingdom is this. The, the difference is this, John, is that Eonian means age abiding. So there's an end to it. Because usually we say forever. All right. Now watch this. Uh, let me have your Bible. All right. Yes, I know she had. Okay, so this, this Bible starts in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Yeah. What do we know about before that? Nothing. Not too much. Not too much. We know that the Word was with God. Yeah. That's all we know. Now, when you come to the end, all the way back, I, I don't want to lose your place, Joan. We go back to chapter 22, and what's the last verse? 21? Yes. Okay. We come to 22, 21. What do we know about Revelation 23, verse 1, and going on? We don't know anything. 
okay? It's age abiding, okay? And that's what that chart shows us in the back. In other words, at, in the beginning here, God was all in himself. And what we do know, that there's a time coming, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, when God is going to be what? All in all. All in all. And so he's working us to that. So the words that we see, when we see forever, eternal, and I'm going to get to those in a minute, the word eternal. It means without end. Yeah, it means without end. So well, we have no idea what's going to happen. Okay? In other words, what our, we're going to have, be, the whole creation is going to be in a relationship with God. I even believe my dog is. Yeah, my dog. My dog is part of creation. Yes. Right? My dog has life. Yes. It's not a robot. No. See? I think God's going to raise everything. Mm -hmm. Everybody. As Mr. Sella says, in its course. Mm -hmm. All right? That, that we have. So, the reason that Eonian and Aeonian are the words that are used by the, by the original writers. Paul, the Lord Jesus Christ, the prophets, you see? And what we've done is, is taken that word and, and made it forever and everlasting and eternal. Mm -hmm. Where in light, there's only one eternal, which I'll show you in a minute. Yep. Okay? So I hope that explains a little bit there. But as we see that. So where were we? 1028? Yeah. Are we already reading? Okay. No? Okay. And I give them life eonian, that they should by no means be perishing, and no one shall be snatching them out of my hand. Okay, we, we read that before. Okay? So that's very important. So until one accepts... Now, this is a very important premise here. Until an individual accepts Jesus Christ as their Savior, they don't have life. Right. You know what they have? Yeah. Existence. Mm -hmm. They're existing. Dead, exactly right. Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. Okay? Dead and trespasses and sin mm -hmm. is, is what we find there. Do you know, I, I, can, I can go on forever and ever here if you want to talk about it. This kind of thing. Uh, how many times have you been through the second death? How many times have you been through the second death? The second death. We read about the second death in Scripture. Death and hell were cast, you know, mm -hmm. and then uh, there's some that are cast in the lake of fire, which is the second death. What is the second death? Well, the second As we understand death. it. Death the, the resurrected okay. Now let me ask you. Let me ask you this. Now that's the end. Okay, watch, watch, watch what happens here. And hang in here with with me. Uh, what's your first death? No. When you were when you were saved when you believed. But did you say that the spiritual death? You were dead in trespasses and sins. You were dead in trespasses and sin. Some time in life passed when you be, knew you were a sinner, you died. That was the first death. Most people look to your physical death. Now, let me ask you this. What happened the moment you got saved when you believed on Jesus? What's that? You died, period. Okay? You died. That's another death. Right? Now, let me ask you this. Now, you're walking along with the Lord and you're, you're growing in the Lord and you goof up. <laughs> you goof up. Now, <laughs> hold on, let me get there first. So you goof up. Lord, uh, I did wrong. I know I did wrong to a person, to myself, whatever it is. I know I did wrong. I need to change my attitude toward that and toward you and that sort of thing. What is that? That's a second death. In other words, you're getting to a place where you, you recognize that past things weren't correct in your life, and you're correcting them. You're dying okay. there. Now, that's not a dying daily thing that you've heard often in, in Christian churches. Mm -hmm. Dying daily means you want to be accepted because of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You and I are complete in Christ. We're not accepted because of what we do. We're accepted because of who we are. Mm -hmm. It's an identity acceptance. God, the Father, Yahweh, accepts us because of who we are in His Son, not because of what we do. What we do is just a matter of conforming ourselves to the Lord Jesus Christ, and every time we realize that we goofed up somewhere, what happens? 
second death. I can take it a verse that says, if you don't love somebody, you have not the love of God in you. If you don't have the love of God in you, you are not His. So what is, when we first learned this, I'm going to go over 20 minutes. What did, we, what did Rick Farwell teach us about the second death when people are raised and put somewhere under somebody's tutelage to do what? Learn to love. Learn to love and not to hate. Love is what God is. It's not his characteristic, a characteristic. It's what he is. Therefore, you and I are going to be love. See? And that's what God is developing in us. And how's he doing it? Through a second death. All right, through a second death. We get too hung up sometimes on, on terms and we don't make them practical in our lives. Okay? We see the second death and ooh, that'd be horrible. To, you go through it all the time. Okay, yes, ma'am. But you have to repent. Well, that's part of it. Yeah. I mean, you, you're walking yeah. along, you're born, yeah. and you have to come sometime. When you get the word, then you repent. Okay? Yes, yes. Oh, and repent means change your mind about it. And if you don't change your mind, if you just keep walking in the world, yep. then the end comes, you're lost. You know, no, 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 that's not what happens. No, that's not what happens, Joe. What happens, a, a lost man cannot repent because he's not in a relationship. When you read the scripture, the only people that repent in the scripture are people in a relationship with God, with one exception. That's when, that's when Paul told the Gentiles to repent, but it wasn't repent towards personal actions, it was repent towards their attitude towards who God was. Okay, that's, that's and you read that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and 10, okay? So, what happens after I get saved, now I'm in a relationship, now I know better, now I can start repenting mm -hmm. of, of what is wrong in my life and get it straightened out. Okay? And unless you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Right, and who's he talking to there? He's talking the to the, the people. The Jews. He's the talking Jews. to the Jews in the Gospels, and they were in a relationship with him because they were under a covenant. See what I mean? Covenant relationship. So they were in the covenant. He wasn't talking to Gentiles there, just, just to the Jews, because they were already in a relationship. They should have been in a relationship with him. That's why we read, hey, he who hears me, he wasn't talking to Gentiles. He was talking to the Jews who were in a relationship with his father through a covenant that God made with Abraham. Okay? And so they were responsible to God. There wasn't any Gentiles that were responsible to God. Okay? In fact, it says in Romans that God didn't even see their sin. It didn't matter to God. They're not in a relationship with them. Let them go the way they want to go. When my people get straightened up, my people, Israel, is going to go around the world, Acts chapter 28, and bring them back. Okay, so that's what you see. Now, keep moving or we'll be here forever. Okay, which is alright with me. So, those who live Christless lives, then, exist. But they don't know what life is. Our Lord Jesus Christ makes life worth living. And you don't have to live in Webster for that. Okay? In his company, death is only the prelude to a life. The only thing I worry about death about is how it's going to happen. And then I want to be with the doctor. So he can load me up. You know, with painkillers or whatever it is. So what we find now is this. That John, okay, is sure that Jesus... I need a place There we go. Thank you. That, that, that Jesus brings life and that God is life giver. Mm -hmm. Alright? So let's look at these verses. We're back to John chapter number 5 again. Okay? Jesus is the bringer of life that God gives, or I should say Yahweh gives. Mm -hmm. Okay? Let's use his name here. So 526, For as the Father has life in himself, so has he given to the Son to have life where? In mm himself. -hmm. So he was given to Jesus. To our Lord Jesus Christ, to have life in Him. It was given to Him. It's almost like a gift. But who had it originally? Yahweh did. You follow that? Okay? Then we come right over to chapter 6. Notice verse 40, please. And this is the will of my Father who is sending me, that everyone seeing the Son and believing into Him has Eonian life, and I will resurrect Him in the last day. Who's going to resurrect Him? Jesus. Jesus is. Okay? 
So Lord Jesus Christ is going to resurrect us, and why is He going to resurrect us? Because it was given to Him to have life. Who's going to judge all men? The Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of Man. Judgment was given to Him, you see. Then we back up, if you would, to verse 27, where it says, Do not labor for food which is perishing, but for food which is enduring to eonian life, which the Son of Man will give you, for Aeol, the Father, hath put his seal of approval on him. So <coughs> the Father approved that the Son gave him life, which he can then give to whom? He can give to others. All right? So now watch. Come back to chapter 17, the great prayer that our Lord prays before he goes to the cross. Okay? Thank you, Tom. Chapter 17, verses 2 and 3. According to what gave him, well, let me read one. When Jesus had finished saying these things, he looked upward to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, according as you gave him authority over all flesh. Notice, gave authority over all flesh. He didn't have it naturally. It was given to him by the Father. That everything, everything which you have given to him, he should be giving it to them, even Eonian life. I think that's exciting. And this is like Eonian. This is it. That they might get to know you, the only true Elohim, and Jesus Messiah, or Jesus Christ, whom you sent. Now this is, this is full of great stuff here. The Father gives life to the Son. The Son gives it to whom? The believers. Okay? Why does He give it to the believers? So they can have Eonian life. Right? And what is Eonian life? This defines Eonian life. Eonian life is a relationship. It's a relationship with the Father and a relationship with the Son. Does it say that or not? See, most of the time people think, yeah, I got the only life when I die, I'm going to have it. You know, or they say, I have eternal life or everlasting life. I die, I'm going to have it. To them, that's life. That's not life. Life is having a relationship with the great God, Yahweh, that gave life to His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, that He might impart it to whom? To us. And therefore, Yahweh's great. Let's go back to Adam. Why was Adam created? Relationship. relationship. To have fellowship, Tom just said. God wanted a relationship with them, with mankind. Alright? He still does. And so now he, the giver of life, gave his son to have power to give it, and his son gives it in order that you and I might get to know who Yahweh is. And after all, why is the Bible written? So that we manifest. To manifest to us the person of Yahweh. And how has he decided to do it? Through his son. Say, through his son. Now, watch it. I can keep moving here as we go on. So what is this life? Okay, what is this life? I think this works this time. Uh, can you click it for me, Susan? Yes. Okay. What then is this life that Jesus brings and God gives? Okay. What is this life? The phrase, if we can click that one more time, okay, that you find... Uh, in life is aeonius. That's the Greek word. Okay, aeonian what? What is aeonian what? That's the whole key to this. What is aeonian what? It's not simply life that lasts forever. Aeonian life must be more than duration of life. That's why I say when they use the words forever, and everlasting and eternal, it takes the meaning out of Aeonius. Aeonius has nothing to do with duration of life. It has to do with relationships of life. There must be a certain quality of life. Okay? Aeonius is, a, it is the adjective which repeatedly describes Yahweh. Let's uh, keep your finger here and come back with me to 1 Timothy. If you would. I don't want to jump the gun here, but do that with me. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Alright. Brother Bill has the, uh, the books in the 
order that they're originally found. So you got the Gospels, Acts, then it goes to the Jewish Hebrew epistles, and then he gets into Paul's epistles, and then he has Hebrews at the end, then he has the pastoral epistles, but that's how it is. Okay, so we're in 1 Timothy chapter 6, y'all there? Okay, now let me pick this up. Uh, in verse 13, watch what it says. I charge you before ail him who is making all things alive. What's he making alive? All, all things. And of Messiah or Christ Jesus, who did testify before Pontius Pilate the right declaration, that you keep the commandments spotless, blameless, until the shining forth of our Adoniah, Jesus Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, which to his own ears, the happy and only potentate, how come he says he's happy? Give me one verse. Thank you, dear. Ephesians 1 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. What's blessed me? Happy. Happy be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the Epiranius. Amen. Amen. Epiranius is higher than the heavens. Amen. Okay? We don't have to be concerned about what's going on here. That's why when he comes back to get the saints in chapter 4 of Thessalonians, he comes back to the air. That's not my hope. My hope is when I appear, I'll appear with him in the upper radiance. Way up there where he already is sitting waiting for me. Okay? Now watch what it says here. Which to its own errors, the happy and only potentate will be showing he is sovereign of sovereigns and Adonai of Adonai, in other words, Lord of Lords, who alone has what? Immortality. So what's that tell you? There's only one that has immortality. One. Therefore, there's only one who can be eternal. Therefore, at the moment, we do not have eternal life because we're not eternal beings. See what I mean? Maybe you can follow that thinking. But we do have eonian life age abiding life all the way out to what God is all in all after that I have no idea but it won't matter why won't it matter because you and I will have the same mindset totally of love with God and whatever God decides to do then Yahweh decides to do when he is all in all I'll, I'll be happy with that say I'll be happy with that only he to mortality this is written to the Lord Jesus Christ, by the way, who <laughs> is dwelling in light unapproachable. Yeah. Doesn't James talk about that? Yeah. He's, he's dwelling in the light that no man can approach unto, right? Which tells me when people die, they can't be in heaven. They can't approach unto God because they don't have a glorified body in which to do it. Yeah. See? Who no man has seen, nor can see, to whom the honor and might Brother Bill translated might, eonium, mm -hmm. and power, and amen, okay, and amen. So, where am I now? I almost lost my place. So, eonium is the adjective which is repeatedly described Yahweh, because he's the only one, okay, that is immortal, that is eternal. Like in 1 Timothy 1.17. Yes. First, oh, I'm sorry, I'm out of Timothy. Let me get back to Timothy. Read it for us, John. In 1 Timothy 1.17, Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. There you go. Be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So who is immortal there? And eternal? Right. Only, only him. Not us. That's what he right. says. Yeah, that's what he says. He doesn't say now unto the King. <clears throat> To the sovereign of the eons, the incorruptible, invisible, only wise Elohim is honor and glory for the eons of the eons. And amen. He is the only one. That's why the word eternal can only be attached to Yahweh. See what I mean? Okay, we can't be attached to any man. Even the life we have now isn't eternal. It was the, in a strict sense of the English language, 
If we had eternal life, that means we'd always have been. Now, let me ask you this. Who believes that? Mormons. 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 They believe we were angels. Mm -hmm. And then angels give a soul put into the womb, mm -hmm. is born. Then when they die, they go back to that to that respect. And yes. that's a different subject. But at any rate, as, as we look at this, then only Yahweh is Aeonius, eternal. He's the only one. Therefore, Aeonian life is the life. Now, here's the exciting part of it. <laughs> it's the life that is God's life. Amen. So we have this age abiding life. He's the one that gives this life. He's the only one that's Aeonius. So the life that we have has been given to us by Him. Not only by Him, but it is His life. Yep. Because He's the one that's English language eternal. Yep. Can you follow that? So he, I, if that doesn't get you a little bit of a shiver, I don't know what will. You have the very life of God that God has in you. What do we call that? In Christ, uh, the indwelling, mm -hmm. right? He's in us, we're in Him. Mm -hmm. In fact, the Scripture says the Father's in us. <coughs> All right? The Father's in us also. Now, i got to keep moving. Colossians, so, Colossians 3, 1 through 3. Colossians 3, yes. Says your faith. Christ in God. Christ in God, okay? So, what Jesus offers men then is God's own life. Therefore, we enter in to the very life of God. Mm -hmm. That's why it ends up with love, and that's why the necessity of a second death. So men can be brought to that place mm -hmm. where they learn to love. Okay? Not as people love, as God loves. Mm -hmm. Okay? As God loves. So can we get another click on this thing, please? Okay? Maybe? So how do we enter into this life? Okay, what well, we believe? Right? We, we believe. Okay? Well, that's true by believing. How many times believing show up in the Gospel of John? Give me a guess. Let's take a guess. 98. 98. Good guess. A little, little, little too high. How many? 72. Look, it takes almost on. 70 times believing appears in the Gospel of John. That's in 22 chapters. Now, what do we have here? Uh, let's go to John 3.36. Let's look at them all real quickly here. Okay? John 3.36. There is no John. Oh, no, I'm in Hebrews again. Forgive me. I knew there was a John 3.36. It was there yesterday. Last week. 45 years ago. 36. He that is believing on the Son has he only in life. And he that is believing not the Son shall not see life. But the anger of Elohim is remaining on him. We've already read 5.4 a number of times. Let's come to 6.47. 6.47 here, please. I believe you don't explain what that is here in just a minute. 6.47. Amen, amen. I say to you that he who is believing has the only life. Now notice this. Who is believing? It's present tense. We saw these folks. Okay? Who is believing? So what does it mean then to believe? Alright? Well, let's let's click this again, Susan, please. Right. What, what does it mean to believe? Okay. Well, anybody, can anybody say uh, John 5, 39? Search, Search in the scriptures, and for in them you think life. you have eternal life. You only life. Okay. You think you have. But what's the key there? I mean, he's, that, that verse, by the way, used to be hanging over our door for 15, 20 years. And it just wore out. Look at that one. Okay? Search the what? Search the scriptures. Search the scriptures. Now, let me help you. Have you ever met somebody that uh, you were in church? You know, Susan and I got saved in a very evangelist <coughs> situation. Uh, both the churches, and her first of Regency, right? Uh, Baptist, and, and I was a Trinity Baptist. And, and people at, at Trinity, I remember one uh, one service, they showed the movie uh, Burning Hell that the sword of the Lord put out. Mm -hmm. There wasn't any preaching. It was just this movie. So people burning in hell. And afterwards they had an invitation. About 300 people went forward. 150 people got, got baptized. I'm, this is true. Mm -hmm. Alright? Got baptized. Problem is, the next week, 
church was still the same size. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where are they? Where, where, what happens? You know what happens? Emotions get involved. When emotions get involved, nothing good happens. Hang in here. There's a place for emotions. But when it comes to believing, not so. Okay? Say why? Because emotions have nothing to do with believing. Search the lot of scriptures. Why do you give out the gospel when you talk to people? Why do you tell me, listen, uh, listen, man, Jesus died for your sins according to scripture. He was buried. He was raised again the third day according to scriptures. That's the scripture. He did that on behalf of you. Right? That's why he did. And he was seen. These apostles saw him, about 500 brethren in one song. Finally, James, his own brother, saw him, and Paul saw him. Mm -hmm. So there were eyewitnesses to this. Those are facts, see? And they've been recorded down through history of men. Search the scriptures. Now, what we have here is, as we, as we look at this, it means we must make up our minds concerning him. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. And you can't do that emotionally. You know what my record is? I've done, I think, 26 or 27 marriages, mm -hmm. we call them, wedding ceremonies. You know what my percentage of, I say success for myself, is 50%. It's 50%. Mm -hmm. How come it's 100%? People. People. People enter into relationships often because of emotion. Okay? And they don't get to the next step. There's nothing wrong with it starting that way. But they don't get to the next step of knowing. Say? That's the same thing with the scriptures. We have to get now, I call it in the intellectual mind. From the time I first heard the scriptures till I made a profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ was about 18 months. Mm -hmm. I used to, and I went to church every Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night, and I was a good Catholic, and I wasn't going to let go of the back of that pew to walk forward for no one. Until finally it dawned on me. My good works and my Catholic background and what I was taught there, that's not the key. The key is entering into a relationship with the one who gave himself for me. Yep. Right? Yep. But I had to get it up here in my mind before. It got to my heart. Now, what makes all your decisions? Your heart. Mm -hmm. The heart's up here. It's not down here. Right. Okay? Now, what happens is this. You intellectually get it. Then it moves into your heart. And belief is taking our Lord Jesus Christ at his word. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Okay? And, but that only comes after you know what the word says. You have to know that. If you don't, you can't get the heart. Another word for heart is conviction, by the way. Do you have a conviction in your own heart that Jesus Christ gave himself on our behalf? That's what it's all about. What we're actually believing is this. I've been telling folks this now for a while. We're believing that God the Father accepted what Jesus Christ did on behalf of mankind. Mm -hmm. That's what I remember when Susan got saved. She was singing in the choir. Regency Baptist, and I was out in the crowd. We came home from church on Sunday, Sunday afternoon with the kids, and I'm never going back there. Just what she told me. I says, well, Why aren't you going back there? That preacher's always pointing at me. <laughs> he was a preacher. He was an old mother preacher, you know. I, and now I got to thinking, Wait a minute. You're sitting back there. He's pointing this way. <laughs> she's, so it wasn't him pointing at what was it? The word of God. It was the word of God that was pointing at her. I got up in the morning. She'd been up all night. She says, you know what? I got saved because I believed. She didn't say on the Lord Jesus Christ. She said this to me. I believe God. Amen. And that's what it's all about. You believe God because the word gets in there, moves to your heart, and belief comes. Yeah. So, I think we need to click this one more time, Susan. So when does this believing, <laughs> when you believe, you do more than just exist. You believe and live. What is the theme of John? First theme, life. He came to bring.
bring life so that men may live. Got it? And it begins with life, it ends with life. And the reason it's there is to bring us out of existence to real life. I mean, how many times over the years have, have you heard messages that say, real life isn't here, it's up there? Our position is where? It's in heavenly places of Christ Jesus. I'm accepted because of my position in Jesus Christ, not because of what happens here. Okay? And that's how we see that. So, one stops existing and begins living. To me, that's exciting. That's an exciting message to share with people. You don't have to beat them down about their sin at all. Say, listen, pal, you are just existing. Let me show you how to live. Enter into relationship with the one who created you. Here's how it happens. He did it all. Now what? Philippians 1.29 tells us that belief was given to us. When was it given to you? When you searched the scripture, got it in your mind, got it in your heart, the conviction came that was the gift of God for in Ephesians chapter number 2. Not by works, right? It's the gift of God by grace. That's what we need to do. But you know what? You've got to come to that place. Why doesn't everybody get saved? How can God just pick out the guy in the street and say, yeah, you're saved? Because they don't have a word in them. God has to have something to work with. You know? We used to, I remember once, I'll close with this illustration. We were once in a service, it's a church service. Uh, uh, I think it was Christmas or something, one of the churches. And the preacher said, all right, we're going to take a change offering for the kids. You remember that? And just take all the change out of your pocket, pockets or your purses or whatever, and what we're going to do is, is put that in there for a gift for the baby Jesus. That's what it was, for the baby Jesus. All right? And so as the off, as, as all the ushers came down, this is the big church, uh, came, came down, and, and people had their change in their hands, he says, wait a minute, we can't give a gift unless it's wrapped. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> so we had to take a dream back on your wallet or and wrap, wrap the change as a gift. Well, in other words, the gift was inside the dollar bill or ten dollar bill, whatever people want to give. Okay? God's so the same way. The word is there. He wants to gift wrap the logos. Who's the logos? Jesus Christ. To give to men. Because that's how he gives. He only life. Right? Age abiding life. And that's what happens. I'm going to close right there.